and welcome to the results of our midlife survey. I'm Kerry Wilden, I'm the founder of Fab After 50 and also co-founder of Midlife MOT and I'm here today with Garth. Hi Garth. Hi Kerry. Hello everybody at Fab After 50. I'm Garth Delican, the lifestyle guy and I'm Kerry's partner in crime where we created the Midlife MOT. That's right. And we are so grateful to everybody who took the time out to do our survey. It was a very impromptu thing. It wasn't really planned ahead, was it? And it was, we it was really great. off the cuff, wasn't it? Uh, it was great fun. And we were actually quite surprised by some of the results that we got, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it kind of opened our eyes a little bit, didn't it? Because we got kind of the results we, 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 we kind of expected, but there was a few kind of curveballs thrown in there as well, which gave us a whole new meaning and a, a way oh, of thinking. We did. I mean, I guess... We, we, split, we split the survey into categories. And for those that didn't take it, what we did, we looked at aspects of midlife and where your concerns were, what you were happy about in midlife, and, uh, and areas that perhaps you got stressed about. And so we covered things like we covered finance, didn't we? Career, health, fitness and nutrition. So I'm counting with my fingers to make sure because there are 10 questions. That is my memory 10. So um, we did relationships, didn't we? Whether we had an opportunities. What else, Garth? Help me. Uh, finances, uh, we said finances. Lifestyle, lifestyle and nutrition, Cuddly uh, family toys. and social. Yeah. Cuddly toys? I, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember all our modules. There I are not, just so you know, that we actually do know what we're talking about, but there are actually nine modules. Mm. Well, unless we're looking at them constantly, I can never remember them off by heart, but it no. does cover every aspect of your life as you're going into what we call in brackets maturity. So it is exactly. finances, relationship, lifestyle, nutrition, family and social. What's the other four? I don't know. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> no. Anyway, so what so we did three, though, isn't it? There, to see what you were happy with, what you weren't, what you weren't happy with. And so the very first question, I guess, one well, thing that came up was how many people were unhappy with their finances? 40, I'm going to look down at my numbers here. 45% of people not happy with their finances in midlife, which is a bit worrying, isn't it? Well, it's, it's almost 50% of, well, I mean, if you take that as a snapshot of the, of the population, which mm -hmm. I'm sure it is quite accurate, yeah. I, I, I bet if you went nationwide with, with, the, with, with, this, with this survey, I bet the figure will be higher than 45%. Yeah, and in fact, 38% of people, could be primarily we're talking about people, you know, midlife, you know, in their 50s and beyond. So 38% yeah. were unhappy at work. Having said that, 12% were already retired. So... You know, and that, that actually that was something we didn't take into consideration either, was it? Which know. actually came that, up in the survey. Yeah, that was a surprise. Um, and that also came out of that was twenty five percent of people even know if or when they'd ever be able to retire. So, yeah, completely uncertain about it. Yeah, so that's something we're going to explore further. Whether that's because of the increase in pension age or whether people just don't want to retire. Well, the thing is, in, in your finance module, you, you've you've done a you, there's a lot of content in your finance module, mm -hmm. and you have actually given people some really easy to follow step-by-step -step guides on actually, well, one, to find out where their finances are, and yeah. two, how to address it if there's an imbalance, haven't you? Oh, very, very much so. It's such a comprehensive module. It doesn't give any financial advice. I'm not talking about where to invest your money or how much to invest, anything like that. But what it does, it really makes you understand exactly what you spend your money on today, like to the last penny, basically, and also look at the lifestyle you want in the future and how much that is going to cost you and then look at can you actually afford that and you know what's the gap and how could you potentially bridge that gap or what lifestyle changes may you have to make you know, now in order to be able to afford it in the future or change your plans. So, you, so rather than put your head in, bury your head in the sand, and we all do that, don't we? We all bury our head in the sand and ig basically ignore the future. Or, or at least I, I have in the past that have tended to do that. <laughs> I think I might be guilty of that as well sometimes. Yeah, but this, this module, you will, you will really know exactly where you stand at the end of it. And it's, I think it's, it really forms almost like the, the basis for anything moving forward, doesn't it? Well, I think the, the phrase you just used about burying your head in the sand is very apt because I think a lot of people do do that with finances because it's a scary it's, it's a scary place to be. If you don't have enough money sometimes to actually live your life and to pay your bills, it can be quite scary. Mm -hmm. And not facing up to the reality of, oh, I've not got enough money is a scary thing to do. But you know, the, the biggest thing about fear, and it's, this is what I tell people and I coach them all the time, is actually facing your fear and going through it anyway. Because a lot of the time, once you confront it, you look it straight in the eye and you actually 
uh, state things to address it it's not as scary as you think it's the actual thought of addressing things yeah. that's where the fear comes from once you actually start to address things you get caught up in the momentum and things just start to fall into place and finances are very much like that i think as well it is and, and can i just make, say, say one thing here i'm not trying to look shifty but we're doing this on a zoom <laughs> um a zoom podcast broadcast platform and girls in my on the left hand side of my screen and i'm very aware that maybe i'm not looking at the camera but i'm looking at garth over on on, the left, <laughs> on, your, on your laptop it's in the middle isn't it so I'm, well you know, I've, I've got me in the middle and i'm looking at the camera well when i remember i'm looking at the camera above like i'm doing now so i'm looking oh, directly well, that's something to learn for the next one isn't it really that we need, <laughs> i need to reposition my camera or my laptop or something on the screen or something right well, when i'm talking to you i'm looking at you on the screen which is making me look as i'm looking down exactly but that, that was <laughs> saying that's the problem right so anyway so and that was a really interesting aspect and also how many people are unhappy at work yeah, I don't think that comes as a, as a surprise to me because I mean, probably not to you either, you know, because I spent 30 years in the corporate world mm -hmm. and I don't think I ever found anybody who was happy in their jobs. And even working as a coach now, it's very, very rare where I find somebody who, who genuinely says, I really love my job, I can't wait to get up in the morning, you know, get on that bus, get on that train, or drive to work. I, I'm gonna have a fabulous time and I don't really want to come home at the end of the day because I love my job so much. I don't know that many people. Oh, I don't know. I used to have a client and I thought they were very much a services based organization. Just so I, I, that was in my headhunting days. And so they sold no products. They sold services based on the people that they had working for them. And I love working for them. It was, I just love that organization. And their philosophy was we, our people are our, our assets. And it's our job to make sure that we create an environment that when they leave home at the end of the day, they'll want to walk back in tomorrow. Yeah, and I thought that was great. And I love working for them. That's really important. I mean, the thing is, as well, you know, one of the reasons we, we do what we do is because we've kind of walked the walk and talked the talk. Mm -hmm. And that's just taken me back in time to probably 1995, I think, when I set up my multimedia agency in Carnaby Street. Say that's the last time you were happy, are you, Gus? No. <laughs> no. It's when I set up my multimedia agency in Carnaby Street. And one of the big things I learned as a managing director when I was MD of a group of companies for a very large advertising agency was the best way to get things out of people. It's all about hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. and if you win people's hearts, you win their minds. You win their minds, you win their hearts. So it's about treating people like people and just not objects and not employees. And it's a massive lesson that I learned. So when I set up my multimedia agency in Carnaby Street, it was very important for me to actually make sure that my employees were, were centre and foremost at all times. So even when they were late in the evenings, I would always make sure, one, they were adequately paid enough to do that. But if there were subsequent late nights over a period of a week or two weeks, I always sent flowers to their wives, so their wives felt appreciated. Oh, that's nice. And literally every three months, I would take the entire, well, I said the entire company, there's only nine of us, but I would take nine of us out for dinner and mm -hmm. I would pick up the bill. Yeah. And people absolutely loved that because they felt I was a, well, I was a caring boss. I wasn't pretending to be. I really did care about my employees because I could see if they felt happy, if they felt appreciated, they just worked so much harder. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. What a slave driver. <laughs> <laughs> slave driver with a velvet glove. Exactly. I know. But to go back to the work aspect, one of the things we do have, we do have a careers module, don't we? On we in do. our Midlife Energy program. So and in that, I think one of the things here, where it's linked to finance and linked to whether or not you're going to retire, is making sure you have the skills to work for as long as you choose to, to make sure that you're marketable. And that's what we do go through in, in the careers module, don't we? We, we go through that to understand um, if what you're doing today make, a, makes you marketable in, in today's um, employment market, but also how can you future-proof that to be able to work for as long as you want to? And in two ways, either as an employee or to set up a business. Yeah, because you're quite clever, haven't you? You've done your career in two parts. One uh -huh. is about kind of actually being employed now, and two is if you want to become an entrepreneur or self-employed or something, which yes. I thought was a really nice touch. And also a lot of people, they don't want to fully retire. So they perhaps you know, go into working on a portfolio type basis or a part-time basis or you know, within an organization or set up a part-time consultancy. So or you know, go freelance to suit their own, um, I guess, transitional lifestyle. So retirement doesn't necessarily mean retirement anymore. And that's certainly what came out in the survey as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I can't, do you have the figures there? I can't remember what it was now. I can't remember now. 
No. But certainly, I think it was, well, all I know is that 25% didn't know if they could afford to retire. 12% yeah. were retired. And the others did have plans, whether they were going to retire within five years, 10 years or or more. And I have to look at my notes. I can't remember them all. No, I mean, I think I fall firmly into the category where I don't really want, I mean, me personally, I don't want to retire 100% because I do like to be active. I do like to be busy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also, um, it is about you know, f filling that time, filling that space, isn't it, with what you actually like doing as well. Yeah. So anyway, so that was the result of, of that one part of the survey. Um, now, the second element, actually the one that people were most unhappy with was the fitness nutrition. 56% of people were unhappy with their own fitness and regime, fitness regime and, you know, things they were eating. Now, Garth, you're the best one to talk about this, because you're going to say to me, well, that's something that's 100% in our control, isn't it? It is so easy to control, but people get tired. You know, people are always looking for a magic bullet or a magic formula, you know, and there's an interesting fact I always put out that, I just can't remember the exact percentage now, but by, by the time that a woman has reached the age of 40, mm -hmm. and this is an average woman, and these are government figures, she's been on 65 diets, and that very first diet, believe it or not, starts at the age of six. Six? Because, at six, because they get influenced by their parents. If their kids are slightly overweight or whatever, their parents start talking to them in a very negative way about being overweight. And, you know, I think it might have changed a little bit now where parents talk more about health and healthy eating. But I think not that long ago, you know, people just used to talk about, oh, my kid's overweight, they need to lose weight. And psychologically, that puts that thought in your mind already and that carries through into adult life you know I mean I had very poor body image myself until I I got to my about 25 or 30 and it's only when I started working out going to the gym and realizing that I had things in my control that I could change my body I could change how I felt about myself and then I started to teach people this but not many people you know not a lot of people like to go to the gym and no. they roll their eyes as soon as you mention exercise oh I don't want to go to the gym oh and I've lost track of how many memberships I bought in January and sort of given it by March <laughs> I know so you and the rest of the population you and the world I think but you know exercise doesn't have to mean the gym it's no. just about being active and activity is what burns calories so activity can mean anything it can mean a brisk walk it can mean swimming it could take your dog for a walk you can walk up and down the stairs three or four times a day at home or even just walking about moving your arms about you might look like a bit of a loony but it burns calories yeah. and it can be as simple as that and then just making making small tweaks small changes to the way you eat and eating to suit your personality and what I talk about in the lifestyle and nutrition module is about eating to suit your personality so forget about diets forget mm -hmm. anything to do with diets diet is a dirty word should even be in your vocabulary it's about healthy eating and it's about eating to suit your personality and you cited one of your friends who lost quite a lot of weight didn't you no actually it was a lady that we um featured on the fab after 50 website it was a lovely story and it started out actually as a response to something i posted on facebook about i think i said what does was it ever too late or what did fabulous over 50 you know mean to you i, I can't remember yeah and this lady was actually in her 60s and she responded and uh, she um had had two hip replacements she was a type two she had type 2 diabetes and she'd lost or over four stone and gone down from a size 22 to a size 12 in one year. And, it's and that, there, there was no gym involved in that. A fabulous story. And I've actually, um, Fab Up to 50 has a podcast, a separate that which we're launching, and she's a guest on my podcast. But her story is on the website already. Um, and she didn't use the gym, did she? She didn't. Well, she's going to a gym now, but she didn't go then. Right. So, well, I just said, but she's a personal trainer now. And she said, this, this personal trainer is actually making her do chin ups and things, which she would never <laughs> have thought a year ago she'd be able to do. Right. So, no, but she, so she didn't start off with the gym at all. But you know, it started off by walking. She was in a situation in her life where she had to walk a little bit more. And, um, and that sort of kick started the whole thing for her. And, and again, that, that, that taps. And, and that taps quite. That was, that was really nice. And that story taps in quite nicely into stuff that we do on mindset as well, you mm -hmm. know, because that is a lot of that is about mindset. Yeah. You know, because you, you can teach people what to eat, you can teach them exercise, but if they're not willing to do it, if they're not willing to make those changes, if the desire doesn't come from within, they're not going to do it. So it is yeah. about mindset as well. Mm. So anyway, so that so that that was that was something which we was we didn't necessarily think that was going to be number one, did we? No, we didn't. No, because that and finances were clearly at the top, weren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the third element, the, the third, I guess, section that we were looking at 
was um, relationships. And we had over a third of people that were unhappy in their relationships. And the other thing that really surprised us, we, we didn't ask about this, but we had people who, were, we had a space for other comments on the um, survey, didn't we? And we had quite a few people who said that they found it very difficult because either they had become widowed or people were worried about what would happen if and when they were widowed. And that's no, something we haven't considered was that dramatic life change when, the, when a relationship from a bereavement occurs in your life. Never crossed our mind, did it? And that, no. that, 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 was, that was a curveball that came completely mm. out of the blue. And it just made me and you realise as well, didn't we, how important our module was about having interest yeah. purely for yourself, not just as you and a partner. Mm -hmm. Because you never know, you know, God willing, that you just don't know what life's going to throw at you. And if you right. do lose a partner and then you're by yourself all of a sudden, and 100% of your life was with that partner, with no other outside interest, you will be completely lost. You will be cut off from that communication with that person you love so dearly. And because you've got no interest yourself, or you had no interest, it will be very hard to pick up the pieces and start a new life. Now, interesting, in the relationships module, it's actually in three parts. And some people wouldn't do all three parts because the first part is that really understanding yourself better and having a great relationship with yourself and looking at the things that you like to do as an individual, yeah. some on your own and some that you can then choose your partner. And if you're with, you know, if you have a partner, then we suggest that really this is a good module to do together because they do that same bit for themselves as well. And then the second part of that module is about, um, I guess, making sure your relationship is sustainable in the future by it could, it could be that things have changed and become empty nesters one of you is retiring both are retiring so there are changes so how you make sure your lives are still on track together with common goals and and personal interests and joint interests moving forward which is, which is really important you know because there's that whole saying about man is not an island mm -hmm. and i think it becomes very true because when you do become an island you're cut off aren't you and exactly. you do feel quite isolated so that's the second part. And then the third part is for those who find themselves single at this stage of life to understand the sort of relationship that they want. It's not, it's, no, we're not, it's not a dating course. It, it's, um, it maybe would give you the beginners, the, it's almost like a beginner's stage to understand what you want first and then what type of relationship you might want and then first steps. Into yeah. the, and the beauty about this is as well, I mean, we're not just talking as armchair experts here, are we, or pocketbook yeah. philosophers, you know, we're actually living this, you know, you're single and professional, I'm single professional, mm -hmm. and, you know, we go on dates once in a while, so we know it can, be a, it can be a minefield, it can be a nightmare, and there's certain things you've got to, there's certain almost kind of rules and regulations you've got to follow, one, to keep yourself safe, but two, to find that kind of fulfilment. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just if you just mentioned though, on the dating front, I have a whole separate dating online program which goes into lots lots more detail. But this is just really, you know, that's just that's just part of a relationships module. Um, it's not it's not a it's not a dating course in any way, shape, or form. But that was that one. That one um, and a lot of it was, wasn't it, really about being confident and knowing what you liked, and then common interest with your partner as well. Part of knowing what you like as well, and kind of pursuing your own interests. It taps very not because you know all these modules are interrelated, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they're all separate, but they're in, interconnected in terms of mindset and strategies, techniques, tools, all that kind of stuff. A part of following what you like to do is actually having a value system in place and knowing what your values are and pursuing interests that actually fire your values as opposed to dampen your values. So it's very important to elicit your value system first and know. What's, you know, what, what's the top of your list in your values? You know, yeah. Is it friendship? Is it happiness? Is it financial security? Once you know your values, then you can start to actually pursue interests that actually touch upon those criteria. So, so looking at, and looking also, we, we asked people, didn't, didn't we, in our survey about what they got most stressed about. And we did have obvious things that came up, like, like health. But then something else that came up, which um, is a bit of a surprise, well, not really a surprise, maybe we should have been expecting it, with missed opportunities. Yeah, I guess there's always that portion of your life where you regret, isn't it? You know, maybe when you said no, when you should have said yes, or you said yes when you should have said no. Yeah. And I don't know, I, you know, I kind of believe in all that stuff, but I'm also a firm believer in having no regrets and moving on. Mm -hmm. But I suppose you can't help sometimes looking back in a nonchalant manner and just, or a melancholy manner and just think, hmm, it could have been so different. <laughs> But, you know, is, would it necessarily have been better? That's the thing. I'm well, a firm believer that things happen for a reason yeah. and you follow a certain path because it was meant to be. And I think looking back and recriminating, I don't think there's any 
I don't think there's any merit in it. I don't know what you think about that. Well, I think we can. We can't go back, but we can. I think we can also accept. Okay, what's past is past, but it's not too late to change the future. No. And we may have exactly. missed opportunities in the past, but it doesn't mean to say that we can't do things today. And the fact we have, when you talk about limiting beliefs and what's holding you, holding us back, haven't we? I do. From doing the things you want. We've also got a reinvention module where if you do want to make changes in any aspect of your life, you know having you know, set up the plans and the, take the small steps to do that. But it is too late to do something different. No, the thing is, well, you know, many of us are governed or our present life is ruled by our past thoughts and experiences. Mm -hmm. But there's a very famous saying, and I've got a great technique that I use. It's about, um, I think it was Zig Ziglar who coined the phrase, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. And that doesn't mean you can go back and change your childhood. But what you can do, and very easily under guidance, you can go back and you can experience your childhood experience in a different way. Because your memories are stored in certain parts of your brain okay. in, in different files. You know, like it might be under a file of trauma or stress or whatever. But if you go back to that memory, you can actually experience it in a different way. You don't lose that memory, but you refile it under, under a different category. And it doesn't have the same effect on you in the present that it did before you changed it. And it's a very interesting technique to use. It's very powerful. It is. But we haven't got that in our course, have we? We'd have to add that as a bonus. Well, I can... Do, <laughs> do, well, do kind of. Yeah, yeah well, I do do creative visual, uh, visualisation things with people. But, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, part of this module we have, th there is a coaching course with me, you know, which is the kind of limiting beliefs yeah. uh, and moving your life forward. So if it did get that deep and people did want to kind of change their past experience we can quite easily do that we, we can add something in and we can do creative visualization technique well, on so that. If people want to see that by all means you know, give put some comments in and we can see what we can do and maybe just run a separate webinar or something on that that people can sign up for yeah because even though we created these modules together we, we, we're still open to doing one-to-one -one coaching with people anyway aren't we we're within the module. so th there's no parameters to these modules you know the modules are kind of our stepping stones they're our guidebook they're mm -hmm. like our instruction books for your life However, you can digress slightly within the parameters of these modules and um, Kerry and I will coach you separately or individually or even, even as a separate group. And also the other thing that came up people also wrote about was um, elderly parents. Elderly parents, I was just, I was just about to prompt and, you on that. And we but, cover that, don't we, in, in, in some ways in our, uh, we have a family and social module. But I mean, looking at elderly parents, I mean, I know it is a concern. And especially now, I mean, I think, Women particularly, I think, are finding it difficult because they're expected to work for longer. And maybe in their 60s, they wouldn't have had to work before. Now they do, which means they're not as, they don't have as much time to look after the elderly parent that they would have done before. And I know it, it is a problem. Um, I've got through this myself at the moment. Uh, I mean, not, I've got, not that I've got to look after an elderly parent. I am concerned because my mother is now elderly. But case in point, what you just said, my sister is the same kind of age as me. She has got my mum living with her and my sister's trying to do a full-time job and look after my mum at the same time and bless her heart, she's doing an absolutely brilliant job but I know, I know she's finding it quite stressful. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, what we look at again, I guess, I guess what the module does is perhaps make you think about how you would manage that and open up conversations with family members about you know, how the responsibilities are going to fall should that Happen. Yeah, because these things come out of the blue, don't they? You, you, mm. you can't plan on your parents becoming ill. I mean, if, or, or kind of failing, or they're healthy. It just happens, doesn't it? It's part of life. But there's no time. You can't say, oh, they've just turned 60, they've just turned 70, they're not going to be failing in health. It, it doesn't happen that way. It just comes out of the blue, doesn't it? It does. I mean, we know people who are fit as a fiddle at 90. Yeah. You know, and others who unfortunately you know, have health issues much earlier on. But I guess if you have open and frank conversations when everybody's well, the people you all know what you would like to see happen. Yeah. Um, that's probably a much healthier way, a more positive way of dealing with it than having to react in an emergency. I think the key thing here is to have a contingency plan and just, well, not even a contingency plan, to have a plan uh, or a modus operandi ready for if and when your parents' health does fail. It's not guaranteed they are going to fail, but if, if, it, if they do, it's important to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of the more detailed stuff. But then we've got the happiness factor, haven't we? Because one of the <laughs> questions we asked was, do you think that your happiest decade is behind you, you're in it now, or it's ahead of you? And only 18% thought that the best was still to come. <laughs> that's tiny. 
Tony, Tony, Tony. And 30% thought it was behind, and 27%, actually 77% thought they were living the best time life of their life now, and 23% didn't know. So I guess the jury's out for those people, but it could still be to come. But the, 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 the thing to come be, that reminds me of the old analogy or metaphor again about glass half full, glass half empty. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's mindset again. Mm. Well, I mean, I have no idea what the future holds. I have to yeah. say, for anybody that knows me first, they've had a pretty, not very nice decade in this decade, so I'm hope, certainly hoping this one isn't my best one. I have, I have had some nice ones in the past, but I'm, I'm hoping this is the best is still to come. So, and, and, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one, because my, my last decade hasn't probably been the best one I've ever had to finish with you. Mm -hmm. So you know, I always think there's better things to come, but, you know, like everybody, I'm not an automaton. I don't wake up automatically every morning going, woo, it's no. a great day. You know, some days, I had a conversation with you earlier, it's not that good. But yeah. you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and making plans for the future and being positive about it. Mm -hmm. Right, so that, so that was our, so that was our, um, our survey. Okay. So interesting stuff, and we will put. I will, will actually post the results. We'll, I'll put an article together so you can see it. You know, the more the percentages, and the percentage lot to take in. But it it was interesting to see the snapshot, and we'll put more surveys out on different aspects as well of life that's, that have come out of this, just so we can all back to understand where we are. And what was interesting, I had so many people, and thank you, some people sent me comments and messages after they completed the survey, saying it made them think. Um, yeah, so and, and, and really, that's what we're trying to do. Daily routine, don't we, guys? And we don't think about our future, or we think, oh, do we really like this, or not like that, or are we happy with our finances, or could we change this, or could we change that? So, so just doing the survey made them take stock. And I think you've got to realise that life, if you want to fulfil life, it can't be a hit and miss affair. I think to a certain, you know, to, to, to a major extent, you do have to start planning your life. You've got to start planning your future because you can't just leave things to chance. It, it just doesn't happen. It really doesn't happen. Unless you were really born under the luckiest star that God ever created. I think, you know, you do have to start making plans for the future. So you, you think but you have to be like a man or woman with a plan? Absolutely, you've got to have a plan. What's that all saying? Plan to fail and fail. Is it fail to plan and plan to fail? Can't remember which one it is. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, no, I don't think you want to plan to fail, do you? I think we have to say if you fail to plan. Plan to fail. If you fail to I plan, I can't remember. The, in, in that, I should know all these things inside you out. You're the coach. You're motiv motivating us here, guys. <laughs> but the, the, the essence is plan for your future. Don't just leave things to chance. Yeah. Because you know, if you leave it to chance, it's not going to happen. Right, so, anyway, so that was our survey. And um, thank yeah. you for taking part. It, it, thank you so much for taking really part. We really appreciate yeah. it, and it gave us a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, we're, we're looking forward to sharing the next one. And also for future podcasts, Garth and I will be coming up, popping up on this every now and again, won't we? Regular ones, without a doubt. The, the thing is, well, you know, once we actually post the article uh, on the survey and the results that we've got, it would be interesting to hear your comments if you if you you know you further like to comment and kind of extrapolate on uh, on the answers. That would be great information for yeah, us. Yeah, see if you're surprised as well by some of the, st the stats that came out. I will share yeah. more stats. We share more percentages, but it was too much. I'd have to sit here reading everything if um. Well, the thing to do is to do a regular Facebook Live on our Midlife MOT page on Facebook mm -hmm. and, you know, just get people, you know, well, get you, our audience, more involved so that yeah. we can actually really have our finger on the pulse and know what we need to deliver and when, and when to deliver it. Oh, I've, never done a Facebook, I've never done a Facebook Live, guys. Well, that's right. It's only like doing this. That'd be fine. It's true. Right. Okay. Right, we have to see. I have to teach me how to do that one. Right, okay. <laughs> so that, that that's all. That's all for today. And thank you again. Thank you so much. And um, see you again. Thank, yeah, thanks, Kerry. I'll speak to you soon.